Hello friends! Today I'm going to teach you how to actually use a sewing machine, since some of you are beginners and want to start drinking and sewing right now! This is Crafting with Cocktails 2.0. Wink! Even though I'm starting a new chapter of Crafting with Cocktails, I, I'm not going to get all torn up about it. First of all, you need to know how to turn the machine on and off. Most mm. people think that they're going to break a sewing machine if they ever touch it. Or they're going to sew their hand right in two. But no. For example, it's very hard to stick your finger under there where the needle goes. Much less when you have a bunch of fabric. This is what we call a pedal. Not like a flower pedal, princess. This is a foot pedal. So you press that and it goes. Your thread is up here. This, the swirly doodle here. It swirls, it's doodly. This is how you control which stitch you're on. I generally keep mine on B, which is the zigzag stitch. And then if you move your stitch width, it dictates whether it's a straight stitch or whether it's a big old zigzag. This is called your foot. You need two strands of thread. You need the original and the bobbin. The bobbin helps connect all of the thread underneath the fabric. Let's talk about tension a little bit. Ooh, there are two places on your machine that you have tension. The first one is up here. And you can adjust that tension just by rotating this little dial. Usually there is a little dial like that somewhere on your machine. There's also tension in your bobbin casing. There's this little place where you actually put the thread through the bobbin casing. It makes sure that your thread is coming from the bottom and from the top at the same rate. Once you get a good tension on your machine, don't mess with it. Unless you're stitching really weird stuff. This is your needle. If you break them, which you will break copious needles if you try to sew something out of your skill set, then you'll need to learn how to replace those. There's this little screw right down here. A lot of machines you actually have to use a screwdriver for. This one is a twist one. Though. Over here you have stitch length. If you have stitch length on zero, your machine isn't going to go anywhere. But if you move it up to five, then it's going to have really wide stitches. You don't want to use that for stuff like the crotch or anything that you want to stay together. Usually you use a five if you're gathering something with all the thread. If thread starts bunching up a whole lot, just re-thread your machine because sometimes it'll fall out of the tension. We're just going to be working with this little strip. I'm just gonna fold it in half. Along that fold, I'm just going to put that under the foot. Ah, we're using our vocabulary. You put your foot down with this because you are a strong, independent woman. Once you have that down, then you press your pedal with most machines you can ease on and it will slowly start to stitch. I'm on a stitch length of five and a stitch width of straight or zero, I guess. We don't do things straight here. Uh. When I'm stitching two pieces of fabric together, you have something that's called seam allowance. The seam allowance is the width from the edge of the fabric to where you're sewing. Now my seam allowance here is the width between the center of the foot and the side of the foot. You can see on your machine that there are little nicks so that you can kind of gauge how big your seam allowance is. If you draw on your fabric with a mechanical pencil, because you're a nerd, then all you have to do is look at that line and make sure it is going into the center where your needle is. So if you follow that, it'll just feed it through for you. Some people feel like they have to like have their hands way in here and all up in their business, which is probably why they're scared that it's going to suck their hand in. You can keep your hands way out here and actually I would suggest that. Because you can guide everything from far away. If you press that, then it will go backwards. That's what we call a back stitch. A back stitch is where you are sewing forward and then at the end of that stitch, you want to go backwards two or three stitches just to make sure that it kind of solidifies what you've done so far. So your thread doesn't come out once you finish sewing a garment and your entire garment doesn't fall apart. It's almost like a, an auto save. When you get to the edge of your fabric, if you want that to be a corner, make sure that the needle 
is sticking into the fabric and then you rotate it by lifting your foot and just moving the fabric over. Let the foot go back down and start sewing again. Now in this case, because I can potentially make a pillow here, I want to leave a little bit of space there. Back stitch, and then you just have that little bit of space, yeah, that you can flip everything backwards. Turn it inside out. Wow, that is what we call bagging it out. So there we go, we've bagged it out and now you don't see the seam allowance that I put on the inside. You just made yourself a pillow. I hope you enjoyed our little map of the sewing machine tutorial. If you click here, then you will be directed to how to thread a sewing machine. So check that out. Crafting with cocktails 2.0.